morning, Sunny. Good to see you. Good to see you. you How's know, the Easter coming? He's been along? dodging me. And, and <laughs> How's he been dodging you? They think I'm I'm troublesome. <laughs> the NDC friends Are and you brothers. Troublesome? <laughs> you know I am not. You know I I always make sure that um, I put up constructive issues that will move this nation forward. Okay. Uh -huh. I think the same as Sammy, but <laughs> sometimes Sammy, you know, they go around uh, when you catch them, they say, oh, say Sammy, do you go around? No, I mean, you, you. <laughs> yeah. Everybody says I know them, yeah. so uh, you'll be the best. But I know we are all friends and brothers. Of course yeah. we are. Outside the studio. The Arrange studio is only the all are yeah. And then we go way back. Yeah. I know, yeah. looks and things. Mm -hmm. how, how is the Easter coming along for you? The clergy are asking us to, to stay peaceful and, and remain together. Mm -hmm. Good call. They make this call every year, and, and yet uh, it does appear that we are not listening to them. Well, uh, good morning to all our distinguished viewers. I will also ask you, are you sure we are not listening to them? I, I think that um, God has been good to us as a country. Uh, we have been an oasis of peace and stability. Uh, we've not had any major uh, civil strife. Um, of course, uh, like in every human society, there are a few pockets every now and then we have uh, uh, some trouble spots that we keep watching as uh, uh, we be the security analyst or uh, the powers that be who have the authority of the state to keep an eye on national peace and stability. But generally, generally, okay. Ghana is celebrated all over the world okay. uh, for being a bastion of peace, of uh, stability. Um, our warmth, mm. our hospitality, even to foreigners, is quite legendary. Mm. And many analysts have been very impressed about the kind of people we are. Mm. Uh, some have even compared us to neighboring countries, to sister nations, mm. and they have all said that we are exceptionally, you know, well-mannered, uh, humane, uh, very kind to each other, largely, largely. And so I will disagree that um, uh, this is a call that is we don't heed, or uh, I, I, it comes almost as second nature to okay. us. That is, that, is, that is who we are. And so very good call by the clergy. Okay. Uh, and we need to commend the clergy in Ghana, uh, uh, apart from the charlatans, uh, which really Bible prophesies mm. that in the last days, many false prophets will abound. And some of them will seek to even divide, mm -hmm. you know, the very elect, to deceive the very elect, to mislead the, the, the very elect, and that they will have their conscience seared with a, with a hot metal. Mm. It was Paul the Apostle who told Timothy to watch out for such false prophets. So. Apart from false prophets who are causing a lot of um, uh, outrage and uh, their conduct uh, seeks to be dragging the name of the church into disrepute, um, you must concede that largely a good number of um, pastors, reverend ministers, apostles, archbishops, no matter how they come in nomenclature or identity, have uh, guided us very well according to the teachings of um, the gospel. They have brought us together. And um, I like the <coughs> religious tolerance that we show. Uh, very very soon, the leader of the Islamic faith, uh, Sheikh Sharabutu, will be celebrating his centenary. Exactly. 100, 100 years. years. 100 years. Next and week sometime. I mean, yeah, I mean, great, 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 great leader. Um, who's been a symbol of peace. I mean, there's no national event you invite him to, Christian event you invite him to, that he will not, he will not attend. Look at how he managed a recent situation yeah. when his youth thought that uh, somebody belonging to another religion had undermined uh, the leader, the chief imam. He, 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 he showed exemplary leadership. You know, so I like the religious tolerance about this country, um, how our uh, religious leaders have bonded together mm. and have brought all of us 
uh, together as one people. And so we must, we must highlight that. It's a strong positive. Look, l let's, let's face it. Without peace, without stability, without coexistence, mutual coexistence, cohesion, national unity, all other things will not happen. Sure. You won't get your investments coming in, jobs will not be secured. There will be no peace of mind mm -hmm. for us to even advance so far as technological advancement or improving the living conditions of our people. So peace and stability is fundamental. And so let's commend the clergy for this call. Um, it's, it's timely. Tomorrow is Good Friday. Uh, we will be remembering the betrayal of Jesus Christ and the crucifixion. Uh, he will resurrect uh, by Easter Monday. And it, 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 it is a pillar. I mean, Easter is the longest celebration of the Christian faith uh, in history. And um, uh, we commemorate that day to symbolize the power of Christ, the resurrection power of Christ. And remember that uh, by that crucifixion and resurrection, we got salvation. We are saved from our sins. Are you Rem surprised? And remember, <laughs> oh, no. remember, remember, remember also that that crucifixion brought us healing. By his stripes, we are healed. Mm. Uh, I, I wonder why my brother is surprised, because uh, ah, he should... He should have I said I'm surprised? <laughs> you know, I said I'm not. Okay. I said not really. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He doesn't mean I'm surprised. Okay. And okay. I said not really. Right. You know, so, so, and, and uh, I, I, he should, he should, <coughs> my brother should know that this, this year marks uh, 20 years since I handed over as SU Vice President in Presec. <laughs> so, um, uh, we may be in the political field, but, but we, but we remember. We remember, yes, who has brought us this far. Some issues, we should some <laughs> issues. <laughs> Without um, politically, he's gone far now. But he knows I'm, I'm his big brother. He's I mean, not paying dues. Anyway, without, Steve. without, without, without Christ, who are we? Exactly. Uh, that we, one is we, a fact. Yeah, we are, we are nobody. Steve. But, but finally, let yes, me, let me just, you. let me just chip in that um, uh, we must also. Uh, spare thought for France um, mm. after the uh, Notre Dame Chapel, the right. most iconic uh, and perhaps the most uh, architectural mm. um, miracle mm. um, was brought down, raised down by fire. Uh, a few um, salvaging has gone on, a few important artifacts, including what is believed to be one of the nails that uh, was used to crucify mm. Christ, as we talk about uh, Easter, is in that in that uh, place, the Notre Dame uh, uh, Chapel, which we are told that <coughs> has been recovered, together with other um, tunics and you know gowns of of, of, of um, very important uh, priests in history, and so uh, we join our uh, fellow Christians all over the world, especially in France and Europe, who. Uh, uh, and the Pope himself, who are uh, uh, <coughs> sympathizing uh, the loss of that okay. building. Grateful. Uh, Stephen, take a bite on this one. The, the clergy are calling for us to peacefully coexist, uh, and, and giving, look at the fact that Easter is a season of love. Do we show that love, really? Um, my regards to our viewers this morning, and I think uh, my brother, Anabo Sami Okujatu has said a lot, and um, all that he said, I agree perfectly. So I will take the other side. Okay. Which I'll is? advise ourselves. Okay. The question you ask, are we really coexisting? To some extent, yes. But I think it's not enough. What to, do we need to, to do? To derive, to derive the needed synergies that we need as a country to mm -hmm. build our country and get to where mm -hmm. we are supposed to be. When we're talking about peace, yes, I agree. Because in my opinion, peace is just resolution of <coughs> sorry, conflict without violence. Okay. And to work together to bring the quality of life that we all need. So that one, no problem. But I think coexisting does not necessarily mean ensuring that peace and tranquility prevail. It goes beyond that as a country and as a society. We should ask ourselves, yes, Christ died for us, and it's a fact. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you read um, Romans 3.23, 
It oh. says that all have sinned and come short of the glory, glory of God. God. And it came as a result of the fact that the sin that Adam and Eve committed, I mean, to our understanding, made all of us sinners as soon as we were born. So there had to be atonement, and that was the blood of Jesus. And that's what we talk about grace. But I think Ghanaians, a lot of us, abuse or misinterpret or misconstrue mm. that vocabulary grace as used in the Bible. So people can take that as advantage and sin mm. and commit a lot of, put in place a lot of antisocial behaviors that are dysfunctional to the performance of our republic and our society. And we just take it. I think Ghana here, the only thing that people think we have to be serious with is fornication. That we really emphasize. But I think as a country, if we had really been coexisting, doing the right thing, mm. the things that Jesus Christ wanted us to do, or Prophet Muhammad wanted us to be do, I'm sure we should have gone far, 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 far as a country. So sometimes I think we over, over, mm. over pump ourselves or we overly pump ourselves to the extent that we actually neglect the details of work that we are supposed to do as a people and attain or retrieve or derive the needed peace that we're talking about. Peace is not only when Sami say something bad to me and I'm like, oh, I won't return, or I do, and he says he won't return. I think peace goes beyond that. Mm -hmm. Quality of life is enshrined in the whole definition of peace. Right. Are we really having quality of life as a people? Are we having redistribution of peace in terms of uh, access to resources, in terms of the development? What have been done to this nation by politicians, mm -hmm. NDC, MPP, even from CPP's time? When we get opportunity to serve this country, what do we do? Are we really corrupt? Mm -hmm. Do we mean what we say? Mm -hmm. What are we doing to the poor people on the street by, by the fact that we have gotten positions and opportunities to serve this country. So I think talking about the, 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 the life of Christ, mm. the death, what we saw on the cross years back, mm. the reflection of it is not what I'm seeing in our country. Okay. We, we, by practice, mm. by demonstration, deceptively, we talk about there are good Christians and good Muslims. I'm not saying that, of course, everybody. But I think we should let this Easter brings back home the turning point that we need, the not. That we can truly, we are all not perfect. But you live in a country where people do not want to develop their competitive edge. Mm. I was discussing with Sam before the program. Yeah. That people think they can only have power, money, other resources, competitive edge, by trading the dignity and reputation of other people. By stealing from the state, mm. intentionally. And they think when they have power and others are suffering, they are okay. By only talking about their interests. But I think that is not what Christ meant for us. Right. And surprisingly, we are all either Muslims or Christians. Mm -hmm. And it's all talk about God, God, God. Mm -hmm. Is it that we think what we are doing one day, we are not going to be judged? So this Easter should really, really transform, revolutionize our minds as a people. Okay. And truly change. Right. Thank you. The politicians have taken us to church. Maybe one day we should see them all wearing clerical collar in the, <laughs> in the pulpit. But let's move on. Page four of the day, Ghanaian Times uh, says the NCC cries for resources to function effectively. The National Commission for Civic Education has bemoaned what it said is the lack of resources for the effective discharge of its constitutionally mandated functions. In view of the commission's uh, commission, now, the view of the has to reorient the mindset of the citizenry for national development may not materialize uh, if the NCC was not seen as the foremost driver of that agenda. The chairperson, uh, Josephine Nkrumah, who appeared before the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament in Ghana yesterday, said the Commission's work was being hampered by the lack of resources. And specifically, she mentions that uh, she finds it strange that they are paid uh, their salaries month on month and yet the money that they need to work uh, to justify why they are earning the salaries that they receive every month doesn't come to them. She mentions, for example, that the regional and district offices have not received any money from government this year, but they expect them to work. How do they, for example, work? So I'll start with you. Are we starving such an important institution of state, knowing their, their key role they have to play in our national development, for the sake of doing the same, or are we just living oblivious of this institution's existence? 
<laughs> my brother, um, this is a tough question. <laughs> and um, uh, once again, like our perennial flats, it's a matter that uh, has been with us for a while. And uh, I recall since 1998, when I was uh, President of the Civic Education Club right. in, in, in Presec. I think we were the pioneering group mm. when Civic Education uh, decided to set up clubs in the various secondary schools. Um, that has been, I recall, the commissioners at the time um, speaking to the logistical constraints, the lack of resources. Mm. Meanwhile, the National Commission for Civic Education is such <coughs> an important, important body that if resourced mm. and listen to the commissioner i mean you only pay in salaries you don't give them the resources they need to carry out the education mm. that they must carry which is key which is critical mm. look many pundits have said that a lot of our challenges that we are confronted with mm. is about attitudes poor attitudes even this flooding situation how we litter, how we block drains, and all of that. Then it comes back to haunt us. Lives are lost. I mean, the National Commission for Civic Education, if you look at Article 233 of the Constitution of Ghana, the functions of the commission shall be A, to create and sustain within the society the awareness of the principles and objectives of this constitution as a fundamental law of the people of Ghana. B, to educate and, and encourage the public to defend this constitution at all times against all forms of abuse and violation. C, to formulate for the consideration of government from time to time programs at the national, regional, and district levels aimed at realizing the objectives of this constitution. D, to formulate, implement, and oversee programs intended to inculcate in the citizens of Ghana awareness of their civic responsibilities and an appreciation of their rights mm -hmm. and obligations as free people, as free people, and E, such other functions as Parliament may prescribe. So the whole of Chapter 19 of the Constitution, mm -hmm. which deals with this constitutional body, the National Commission for Civic Education, is integral to our forward march. True. You know, our rights as free people. Look at some of the cultural practices. Mm -hmm. If people knew their rights, they would not even allow family heads to force young children, 15, 14, 13, into early child marriages. Mm. If people knew their rights, they would not accept their daughters to be subjected to all kinds of human rights violations, whether it's female genital mutilation or it's, you know, outmoded widowhood rights and all kinds of things. We have a lot of cankers mm. ailing our society, holding us back from developing as we should and liberating our, our full potential. And the National Commission for Civic Education is key. If you go travel around the, the districts, in my district, they, we, they don't even have an office in the North Town District. Really? They, yes, they don't. They don't have offices in all the districts. <coughs> That's so a shame. All the 260 districts. It's a big shame. And the, 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 districts, that, the districts that have them, North Town, in, oh, okay. in, in my district. The districts that are blessed to have them go and see the resource levels. Mm. I've traveled across the length and breadth of this country, and you visit NCC offices, no computers, <laughs> terrible furniture. So we need, we need to ask ourselves, do we still believe in the relevance of the NCCE? Do we think that they play a very strategic role mm -hmm. in the progress of our society. If we answer in the affirmative, mm -hmm. then we need to change attitudes. The executive, the, the, the powers that be, the president, in allocating resources, we must ensure that they are well resourced to carry out their mandate. They, they come before the Public Accounts Committee nearly every year. And this narrative is, did not start today. 
we, we listen to them, mm -hmm. we commiserate with them, mm -hmm. and then we let them go. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, the commissioner said that as of last year, the third and fourth quarter mm -hmm. did not ap ap appear. Mm -hmm. Now we're in the second quarter mm -hmm. for this year, and they have only got the information that funds will be released to mm -hmm. them sometime. Mm -hmm. It's not even released. Mm -hmm. Why do we do this to mm -hmm. ourselves? Why? I mean, I mean, I mean and I, yet allocations are made for them in yeah, the budget. Yeah, I mean, we in Parliament will approve, and that is why we always tell our constituents to be careful when you hear huge sums has been all. Um, this agency has been uh, <coughs> uh, allocated, and mm. Parliament has just approved 100 million cities. <laughs> Approval in Parliament is not the same as release, actual release mm. of funds. So we always have to be cautious. And, and look, let's face it, for a developing country, mm. so many competing needs. But you see, we ought to prioritize, okay. and we ought to be honest with how we go about public financial management. You see, we keep promising and promising, and uh, we want to take, I have, I have fundamentally had issues with how we budget in this country. Why can't we prioritize in a year, say that, look, this is what we will focus on. You can't do everything at the same time. Right. You know, and that has been our bane. We, we want to please everybody, all sections of society, and so, you just do approvals on paper. As an MP, our district assembly common fund, I mean, you'll be shocked to know the level of arrears, you know, and yet in the constituency, the people expect the district chief executive to be working, they expect projects, they expect the MP's common fund to uh, benefit them. They want to see the, the common fund at work developing the district. But if it is in arrears, two quarters, three quarters, what can you do? So we, 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 we have to take a serious look at our financial situation. Okay. And when you have all this hold back, mm -hmm. you know, you're not releasing funds, okay. contractors are not being paid, statutory obligations are not being honored, you know, and then you want to state out there mm -hmm. about how your fiscal deficit is great and all of those things. Meanwhile, you have all of these, 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 these gaps. Mm -hmm. So I will say that, look, let's come back to the drawing board. Let's take a second look at how we do our budgeting. Mm -hmm. Let's prioritize the age-old saying, looking <laughs> at the size mm -hmm. of your cloth and advising yourself accordingly. We need to go back to that. Right. Uh, but the NCC, I say that, look, it's, uh, <coughs> a, it's, a, sleeping, it's a sleeping giant. Uh, since the days of um, Zibuzia, who was, um, um, who, 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 who headed a similar um, civic, civic education uh, uh, body in, in history, we need, we need to um, do our best mm. to resource the civic education right. club. And I would also, finally add that I want to see mm -hmm. a civic education club leadership that does not only wait to appear before the public account committee, uh, committee of mm -hmm. parliament to bemoan the right. situation. I want to see a, a leadership that is dynamic, mm -hmm. that accepts these challenges, mm -hmm. because nothing in the constitution stops them from raising funds, okay. from reaching out to other bodies mm -hmm. outside the state. I am sure that if they put together you know, the, the, a compelling proposal, mm -hmm. corporate Ghana would want to assist, okay. you know, the embassies, you know, um, other public spirited person. All of us may chip in for all you know, you know. So I think there is also the issue to do with the leadership, okay. how it's not been that dynamic. And all of us do that as members of parliament. Mm -hmm. I do not depend only on my common fund. I try to reach out. And you are amazed sometimes the kind of support that when you reach out, you get, you know, from the non-traditional sources. If you say you sit down and just wait for your common fund to come or what has been approved in parliament, I mean, when we know the situation historically, okay. it, it will not help. So that is one, not to indict the current leadership, but I, I just want to see more dynamism, uh, some thinking out of the box to raise funds <coughs> beyond 
just waiting for and, and, I, and I've seen uh, some donations you have done mm -hmm. to schools and hospitals in yeah. your constituency yeah. Yeah. you know with, with yeah. that kind of fundraising yeah. as well yeah. I've yeah. seen it on no I've seen it on oh, social yeah. media yeah. the, the yeah. pictures have been on social media mm -hmm. but Stephen uh, step in for me the commission says they have 260 district offices um, they have 132 vehicles 60% of those vehicles are more than 12 years old so they, they don't need to be on the road per our own dictates now the chairman of the Public Accounts Committee has asked that the Auditor General does a performance audit to know whether we really, really need the NCC, whether they are performing, and if they are not, we should find a solution to it. W what do you see to be the real problem that we can solve immediately? Hmm. If you say immediately, then it's cash. <laughs> but yeah, I they, think, they're asking I for think, money, by the way. You know, it was set up, I think, if I'm not wrong, 1993. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, with the constitution. Which is about, per my mathematics, 26 mm -hmm. years now. Right, mm -hmm. correct. And if you can go back, as far as probably was set up, almost every year, every regime, this complaint surfaces. True. Comes out every year. True. I don't think it's only the, the NCC. Yeah. And... I don't want to look at it because of one institution. It is actually telling us that there's a huge problem in our society, the way we are managing our state budget yeah. in terms of what goes into setting up state budget mm. in our country. True. What do we do? Do we really understand as a people, all of us, mm. are we doing the right thing or always we have templates? And then we fix in education, health, infrastructure, roads, okay. and other things. I mean, roads in, in terms of infrastructure. Or, like others do elsewhere, they sit down, they plan, they know even the global economic performance, where it's taking us to for the next 10 years. And because of that, we sit down, do tailor made economic policies and do and enshrine and shine that or integrate that in our budget mm -hmm. budgets that investors can look at and say that hey i can do this business this way you know one thing about africa tell and, me. and and ghana tell me if you look at other developed countries all budgets just like anywhere has three major components mm -hmm. the revenue aspect or the revenue budget expenditure budget or the outlays and then the difference gives you that deficit or surplus. Where the problem is most okay. is within the expenditure budget. And even that one, the problem is divided into two. We have the statutory and we have the discretionary. The problem is where we have the discretionary, discretionary. arm of our budget. Okay. I don't know. Sami being in parliament may know more than I do because probably I'm suffering from asymmetric challenges and asymmetric information challenges and stuff like that. But if what yes if ncca's budget does not fall within the the statutory arm of our budget then i think it's about priorities the challenges i mean in terms of pecking order, which area is needed most but by ncc does because it's, a, in the, it's, it's a, within it's a the statutory yes then it becomes a very serious issue and i think all governments have not been doing well did we set them up to fail and no, <clears throat> sorry, what is happening is that almost every Tom, Dick, and Harry in Ghana, every Ghanaian mm. talks about our mindset, it's about the people, it's our attitude. Everybody talks about that. Mm. Anywhere there's a conversation. And one thing I've seen about Africa and our country is that even though we acknowledge problems mm -hmm. that exist, we talk about them. But the problems can be there 100 years. We can't solve them. Why? <laughs> Sometimes. It's, I think one day, give like 10 hours, let's discuss these things. Because without discussing these things into details, mm -hmm. MPP will come, NDC will come, CPP will come, the problems will be there. Look, if I were any government, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm saying this not because of MPP and DC. I think what we're supposed to do is that now that we know that President Mahama, His Excellency Nanado Dankwa, mm -hmm. His Excellency Rollins, mm -hmm. Kofu, mm -hmm. can come out with all the best policies in the world. If we don't change our mindset, our attitude, our way of doing things, forget. 
and one of the institutions that can be empowered financially mm -hmm. to help us change our mindset is NCCA. So I think sometimes it is the importance that we attach to some of these institutions. And sometimes because of also the prevailing challenges in our health and education sector that we think, hey, for you to attain long-term economic growth and stability in all over the world, to things productivity, and then talking about the labor force. So labor force, you talk about the skill component. Skill component, you talk about education. So we look at this and like we panic because we, we have Russian budget. Mm. But I think it is time we introduced new paradigm shift that will address the fundamentals that will enable us to redefine our corporate focus as a country and build this country. Because look, NCCA is extremely important institution in our country because of the way we are. Do we realize that? Our attitude. Uh, that's what I'm saying. That I can't say we do or we don't. Probably because of our priorities, because of managing our Russian budget or limited budget, because we think other areas are very crucial and in terms of lives, they are directly affecting us. But I think health sector, education sector, infrastructure, all these things are not doing well. Not necessarily because of resources in terms of money, but because of attitude. Right. So we should champion campaign. I agree with Sami that we should make sure that we revive these school NCCA clubs, clubs right. and make sure that they are well resourced to educate people because, boss, we are losing it. This part of our culture, the time we go to work, even these cars you are talking about, for all you know, NCC will be giving new cars. They will be using the cars, doing other things. They even themselves. So I think we need to, as a country, make sure that we set our priorities right. Mm. We know where we are as a republic and realize that some of these institutions, we are not supposed to heave scorn on their potential to contribute immensely towards building our society. And this is what we have to do. So I think <laughs> it's timely in terms of what we need to do now. Mm. We shouldn't really go back, this thing happened, that thing happened 10 years ago, 20 years today. It is a prevailing challenge now. What can we do as a people? Immediately, we should find a way of resourcing them. Mm. And then beyond that, we should sit down and reframe, redefine mm -hmm. from now up to, look, if you have any other country, they would have had plans for NCC for the next 40 years. Mm. And that framework would have been there as a benchmark to appraise how we are performing in these areas mm -hmm. 20 years ago. Moving but forward, I tell what you, do we do? Yeah, that's what I'm saying that, one, they need resources. I mean, without any uh, dispute or debate. Two, not just the resources, the stakeholders, in these areas should come together and redefine, mm. properly set it up to ensure sustainability. So they should quickly, in terms of short term, resource them financially. But going forward, how are we going to make sure that it's going to be effectively used and money? Sometimes we even use it for politics. Right. <laughs> Election times, mm -hmm. some of the district heads and other things, instead of using NCCA to educate people how to vote, how to avoid probably election or practices and other things, how to avoid scarcity and urban behaviors or antisocial behaviors of the people, putting up behaviors that will provide the coexistence, right. tranquility right. you talk about. Right. They rather use it in depending on the political affiliation of the leader. Mm. So I think first thing is the money. Second thing is let's run the table, redefine it. What are we going to make it better in terms of structure, mm. in terms of operations? When I talk about structure, I mean even what kind of organogram are they using now okay. in terms of structure mm. and functional organograms? Who and who? How are we going to get this thing down to the schools? Even to me, to the, to the even <laughs> JHS. Because now nationalism is no more. We just talk about it. But through education, when we're kids, most of the national songs transform some of us and put us into these social issues. When we're kids, Yenire Assassini, God bless our homeland, no, even in churches. Exactly. Yeah. These things. And some of these things could be things even that will be revived by NCC. So I think as 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 a government and as a people, let's begin to apportion some of our resources, our time, okay. our concentration and our energies to these areas okay. and make sure that we change. Once we're able to change our mentality as a people mm -hmm. with the huge endowment of resources that we have, both natural and raw, and even in terms of skill component of our labor force, mm -hmm. 
by mm -hmm. 15, 20 years' time. I don't think anybody will want to go to the U.S. Or they will be fighting, getting visa coming here. Right. But with this present mindset, the education that we need, mm -hmm. I think NCC is the best key. Sam, finally. Yes. Um, I mean, finally, I, I think that in this discussion as well, the big elephant in the room is also our attitude to expenditure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do we need 275 MPs, for example? Do we need 260 districts? And are they yeah. working? We are creating new are districts virtually every week. <laughs> are they working? Are yes. they delivering? Some are do working, we, some are we, not. Do we need these new regions? We are always creating bureaucracies. You don't have enough resources. Mm -hmm. And yet, you are always spreading yourselves thin. Very thin. So, I mean, that you know, I disagree you know, with you. Know, so, no, no, so, I disagree no, because, with you. Because you need to... No, you what, need what to, will you, the new region do in terms you, of negativity? You, you have to, no, I'm, no, no, I'm talking... Uh, One population no, is I'm growing. Talking, we need to decentralize no, it, and it, ensure you're, effectiveness you're, you're, in terms of supervision. No, but you're increasing your expenditure. If you listen... And to, you're increasing if you, your productivity. If you, if you listen... So you not, do the net. Not necessarily. Get the net. No, not necessarily. But not necessarily. You're also increasing your expenditure. Big governments do not necessarily translate into... Productivity. Do we need 120 whatever and, ministers and then, now? And then I have, I have lost. creating new <coughs> regions doesn't mean we are I, I, increasing I, I, our expenditure. I, I have lost count. No, you 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 are increasing the number of people you must pay, the number of VAT you must but buy. Do you also consider the, the productivity that comes out must, of this? I mean, you must construct. Do you also consider you know, the productivity? So 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 fundamentally, I think that we need to take a, a higher <coughs> and closer look at all the bureaucracies that we are establishing on a daily basis. We seem to love big governments. If you listen to the people on the ground, why are they clamoring for, oh, we want a new district, we want a new region? It's because they say the distance they have to cover. We have not been able to send amenities close to the people. They want a passport, they want a birth certificate, they, <coughs> they want driving license, they have to travel very far to either come to Accra or a regional capital. So they think that the only way is if they are also declared a capital, a district capital, a regional capital, they will have yeah. some of those offices. But is that, I mean, so how, how, when will it end? It is, <laughs> we yeah. must accept that it's a failure okay. of leadership mm -hmm. at the national level to fully decentralize and like we share the ballot papers to everybody. It who means is, failure who of is, all governments. All governments, successively. Yes, all, all, all governments, successively. Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 all governments. I'm being very nationalistic. You know, yes. they have collective failure. Let me emphasize collective. Mm. You know, to let development go down there, mm. you know, where every body can feel it, can experience it. Like the way we share the ballot paper on election day. If we share the national resources, the national cake, equitably like that, right. they will not be clamoring for all these new, we want new districts, new constituencies, new regions, and then we keep giving it to them. While that is not the solution, you are increasing well, your well, your okay. expenditure you know, commitment. Just, so, just, just so, something. So, so we need a paradigm know, change. Do you know? Do you know? Something else. Oh, so just, mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Do you know the the British High Commission? Mm -hmm. Once upon a time. Mm -hmm established their base in Kumasi. They did that. They yes. decided they took yes. it there. Yeah. I don't know yeah. actually mm -hmm. what happened. Mm -hmm. Whether mm -hmm. people were not patrons. You know some of the people to trust me. If you, if you put the best medical center in their community, they would like to go to Confanochi or They would like to come to Accra. Mm -hmm. So I think and all these things, NCC. NCC. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's move on. Uh, yesterday, the government gave the police 64 more vehicles in addition to the Corolla that we saw them receive uh, some time ago. We are told that this Easter uh, we will get 14,000 police people, anti-terrorism, MTTD, regular police to be helping with our security. And we're told that it is in a bid to retool the police service. But somebody has asked, is it only cars? Do they need only cars, Stephen? <laughs> in terms of retooling, I remember when the, uh, the murder of Chief Inspector Ashi Levy at Kwabina, we were told by the Vice President that we we're going to have CCTV cameras, for example, in every police station. We were told that they'll get some more ammunition and all of that. So far, it's been close to a year, and we have only gotten cars. And somebody would ask, do you, do you need just cars to fight crime? Um, we don't <clears throat> just only need cars. That's a fact. But cars are very important um, tools in fighting crime and ensuring security. 
So it's very important. And I think we should also accept the fact that development is a process. It's no event. And um, I'm sure some of the things or the tools that they procure for police are not necessarily put into the public domain. We should also know that because some of them may not really need the attention you're talking about. So when the vice president said that, um, sometimes, I, I, I hope you understand asymmetric information. Right. Not all stakeholders will be privy to all pieces, all relevant pieces of information at all times. And sometimes even procurement, it goes a long way. Trust me, it's when I got this position, I see that I realized that procurement in Ghana has to be revised or reviewed or whatever. Because sometimes, honorable, even the procurement itself, that is che checking corruption. It's true. If you're a very dishonest CEO mm. and you're a thief, you can use procurement to make money mm. even more than ever. I'm trusting me. And sometimes it, also I'm not saying it's not good. It's an extremely good thing in terms of fighting corruption. Right. But even sometimes the time involved, the time frame, yeah. going through, there could be mistake. You have to go back. This was wrong. You have to do something like procurement can take you one year. Trust me, depending on what is happening. So we don't have to always inferences like oh you say you do this you have not done it we don't know you haven't complete of course that is why when we're talking about budget it's basically your programs and how you finance it it's just proposition okay. it's not like when we say budget oh no that's why you have variance either you spend more or less one thing that i think i agree with you we have to also dwell on is that the competence mm -hmm. the efficiency the effectiveness in policing in Ghana. Let's be extremely honest. The policeman, just like any other Ghanaian, because it's a major problem now, I think that the, 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 we always place premium on individual and self-interest than or to the social interest. You drive from Kumasi to Accra, even sometimes some of the police, what they wear. Even sometimes what they wear. Not that even they don't have the uniform. But even making sure that they put their things in order, their attitudes on the road, their attitudes on the road, where not all sleep, of them. Where they sleep is also a problem. I, so you understand what I'm saying? If they don't have peace of mind, how do they police you well? So exactly, where they sleep. But let me also ask you, I think in UK, I do not say I know everything, but where do the police sleep? They don't build houses for them. The when we build for them, there's nothing wrong with it. They live among the communities, and that is why they, yes, in terms of crime, they are, they are <laughs> higher than us, but they can easily get whoever is involved. What I'm saying is that, yes, I agree with you. It shouldn't only be cars. Yeah. Other gadgets that we need, and then making sure the police in Ghana are meeting the standards. You know, we, we are supposed to have one police to 500 that's, in terms of the world standard, standard, the ratio or the yeah. proportion. Mm -hmm. Not just meeting the number. <clears throat> Look, right now, if you like, let's drive from here to... Kumasi, okay. on the road, or Cape Coast, police will be there. And they are taking money, and everybody sees. Everybody, I mean, let's be honest. And not all the police anyway, mm -hmm. some of them will not. Let's be very honest. Right. But their concentration is so much on what they get. So any government, being government A or B, after resourcing them, let us find a way of finding out what can let police stop this thing and be extremely independent. I also okay. suggest that, in my opinion, IGP shouldn't be appointed. Okay. That's that's my view. That's your view. I think Great. IGP we, shouldn't we, we be appointed. To so that in terms of in terms of liberation, in terms of independence, in, independence. in terms of non-partisanship nature of our security agents, it will be highly mitigated. Then we can have fair security even during elections okay. and other social activities. I'm sure with that we'll go out there. So it shouldn't just be the cast. Okay. There so should be other take, factors take a bite to this. be considered. Uh, the police are getting retooled uh, gradually. They, they, they're looking good mm -hmm. and better. But yesterday mm -hmm. I saw a police MTD officer mm -hmm. uh, along the stretch in front of the police headquarters. Mm -hmm. And he was doing a very good job going, drive, riding in between mm -hmm. and cautioning drivers who were trying to speak on phone or, you know, mm -hmm. speaking on phone mm -hmm. to stop because <coughs> it was dangerous. Mm -hmm. And I looked at his bike. Mm -hmm. It was a rickety, a rickety bike. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody, if you drove that, if you rode that bike, the mm -hmm. police would stop you and say, 
<laughs> but you know now they have a lot of bikes. Yes, but they may not be the best. What, what but now they have a was lot of motorbikes. Yesterday, as I saw, mm -hmm. it was so bad. Was not good. <laughs> and I was thinking, why? <clears throat> I mean, Maybe I'll show you a photo. Oh, why? Wow, you had a photograph yes. of it? Yes. But uh, this thing must stop. You, you finish. You are, you are just, I think, getting into somebody's privacy. No, I'm not. See, this is the bike. This is the bike. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, quite, this is quite, the bike. Quite, quite old. Um, oh, but this is not bad. Mm. Ah, because I'm uh, not going to check this. Mm. I'm not saying it's the best. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're, we're depriving our viewers of oh, we're depriving our viewers of oh no I'll show no, it to no, you no. I, wait, let's show. show it to you let's show it's not that bad I'll show it to you we are improvising what we have okay yeah, yeah but 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 <laughs> but let's let's face it Stephen I mean these are people we send out there in harm's way look at the output of the average police officer mm -hmm. our men and women in uniform are working at night, mm. at dawn, during the dusk, they are expected to be out there when it's raining, mm. when the sun is shining, mm. very hot. In other words, they are at the mercy of, of, the, the, of the vagaries <laughs> of the weather. <laughs> And what they go through mm. to protect us, to keep us safe, and to keep this republic is no mean a sacrifice. Mm. And so we need to all commit to supporting them. Okay. That picture certainly is not the best. And let's, 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 let's remember that crime is getting sophisticated and sophisticated by the day. Mm. These criminals are able to purchase the most modern motorbikes, most modern vehicles mm. that, uh, that, that can move at, at, at a faster pace and, and all of that. Mm. So in resourcing the Ghana Police Service, mm -hmm. we must make sure that we give them the best right. so that they can fight crime and carry out their mandate. Mm -hmm. So we commend government for this, uh, this, 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 this donation of 64 vehicles. Right. We wish it was more. Mm -hmm. We wish that cross country it, 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 vehicles yeah, actually. So yeah, you know, but oh, they but, are cross country. Yeah, but it, it's, a, it's, a, oh, it's that's a, nice. That's it's very, a, very good. It's a, 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 it's a good effort. Uh, but as you have said, there have there have been times that we have heard the police complain even about communication gadgets. But, but I mean seriously, you know, so now like, 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 we didn't two and a half years is doing so much. Work. We, Let's we, be honest. We, we I'm not saying so all is well. Agree. Oh, when, it's when, doing when, fantastically well. When, I mean there are challenges. When, when, there are still problems. We need to go. When 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 we're speaking, I didn't. I think two and a half you know, years. Oh, he's made a record. Is it, is it, no no no, Stephen, don't don't be sure. No, this is not about you. I'm not making comparative. President, we need to go. You see, you're forcing me to put out President Muhammad's record in terms of retooling. It's far better. No, you cannot Mama. compare the two bills. Yes, you can compare. We are talking about agree, Christ. Agree, all, agree, we just talk about Jesus Christ. Please, please. Uh, no, we just talk about Jesus Christ. Go and, go and talk to it's sorry. about the truth. Talk to, Steven, talk to It's just I'll about the to, truth. I to finish. Ah, uh, Easter. Some Easter, Easter is at the corner. Steven, Steven, please. No, it's not about you. You don't get it. I'm sorry. Allow some wrap up for me. I'm saying all our presidents have retooled. President Mohammed's record in retooling the Ghana police service is on par they know that we're talking about hundreds of vehicles we're talking about helicopters we're talking about <laughs> new forensic <laughs> structures go to the police headquarters so please but you see the most important issue to the to the ghana police service today mm -hmm. my brother is the attempt to migrate them mm -hmm. from cap 30 to snit yesterday the minority issued a statement signed by the honorable uh, James Agaga, a ranking member on defense and interior. <laughs> we, we call on government to rescind that cabinet decision, okay. which was announced by the Deputy Minister for Employment and Labor Relations when right. he appeared before the Public Accounts Committee on the 8th of April uh, this year. So that, 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 that is a bad decision okay. to move oh, the police so service, fire service, immigration, <laughs> BNI officers 
from Cap 30 <coughs> to uh, oh. to Snit, leaving only the armed forces is a recipe for disaster. Uh, the anyway. police have started demonstrating. Can, can have you seen them wearing red, red, yes, you know, red masks. masks? You know that okay. Azugu, uh, Thank you. Azugu <laughs> demonstration. Uh, you know, so, the, so the, 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 the government must speak. The government must try hard so that Thank you talk. very much. So I, mean, I, 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 I wanted to wish the Otum for uh, yes, happy yes. 20th. Yes. I was there yesterday. Oh, yeah. Maslow yeah. were there. It was oh, fantastic. Great. 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 It was fantastic. Yeah. You, you happy, know, you, happy anniversary. You know one thing that has made me we need to go. love him more? I was in Western Region mm -hmm. and somebody had his T-shirt. And I'm asking what's happening here. And earlier he said, Otum Force Education Foundation, Education mm -hmm. Foundation, mm -hmm. helped his son and now his son has finished university. Wow. I'm like, wow. Somewhere, yeah. northern western. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah. I think Nana. Nana, 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 Nana thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. CEO of <laughs> Maslock and Samuel Kudetobak, our honorable mm -hmm. member of parliament for North Tong. And there's also the ranking member on foreign affairs in, in uh, parliament. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your time. Most grateful, Steve.